Once upon a time, in feudal Japan, there were two legendary swordsmen named Miyamoto Musashi and Sasaki Kojiro. They were both known for their incredible skill with a sword and had become the talk of the town due to their rivalry. Musashi was a samurai who had developed a unique style of sword fighting known as Niten Ichi Ryu, which involved using two swords simultaneously. He was a fierce warrior who had never been defeated in a duel. Kojiro, on the other hand, was known for his extraordinary skill with the longsword and was known as the Demon of the Western Provinces. He was also undefeated in his career. The rivalry between Musashi and Kojiro began when Musashi was still a young man. He had heard of Kojiro's incredible swordsmanship and was eager to test himself against him. Kojiro, too, had heard of Musashi's skills and was excited to face him. Their first battle took place on the shores of the island of Funajima. It was an epic duel that lasted for hours. The two warriors clashed their swords with ferocity, neither one giving an inch. But in the end, it was Musashi who emerged victorious. He defeated Kojiro with his unorthodox style, which Kojiro had never seen before. However, instead of taking pleasure in his victory, Musashi showed Kojiro the respect he deserved as a warrior. He offered his hand to Kojiro, helped him to his feet, and acknowledged that he had been a worthy opponent. This gesture of respect left a lasting impression on Kojiro, and he felt a deep admiration for Musashi. Despite the defeat, Kojiro did not give up. He continued to train and hone his skills, determined to defeat Musashi in a rematch. But it was not to be. Every time they met, Musashi emerged victorious, leaving Kojiro frustrated and discouraged. Their most famous encounter took place on the island of Ganryujima. It was a duel that would go down in history as one of the most intense sword fights ever witnessed. Kojiro had prepared himself extensively for this battle and was determined to come out on top. The day of the battle arrived, and the two warriors stepped onto the island. The sun was shining down on them, and the sea was calm. They stood at opposite ends of the island, swords drawn, waiting for the signal to begin. The signal was given, and they charged at each other with full force. The sound of their swords clashing echoed across the island. The battle raged on, each man trading blows with the other. Kojiro's speed and precision were matched by Musashi's unorthodox style. As the battle continued, Kojiro began to feel the strain of the fight. His movements became slower, and his sword arm grew tired. Musashi sensed his weakness and moved in for the kill. With a swift move, he struck Kojiro down, leaving him defeated. The crowd that had gathered to witness the fight erupted into cheers. Musashi had won once again. He bowed respectfully to Kojiro's fallen form and then left the island, his reputation as the greatest swordsman of all time firmly established. Despite their rivalry, Musashi and Kojiro had a deep respect for each other. They recognized that they had pushed each other to become better warriors than they would have been without each other. And even though Kojiro was defeated, he remained in awe of Musashi's incredible skill with a sword. After the battle, Kojiro retired from sword fighting and became a monk. Musashi, on the other hand, continued to roam the countryside, taking on challengers and refining his skills. He wrote a book called The Book of Five Rings, which is still studied by martial artists today. Musashi's life continued to be full of adventures and battles, but he never forgot his rivalry with Kojiro. Even in his old age, he would often think back on their battles and reflect on how they had both grown as warriors. Years after Kojiro's retirement, Musashi received news that Kojiro had passed away. He was deeply saddened by the news, realizing that he would never have the chance to face his greatest rival again. But even in death, Kojiro's legacy lived on. His swordsmanship techniques were studied and practiced by many, and he became a legend in his own right. Musashi, too, continued to be revered as one of the greatest swordsmen of all time. In the end, their rivalry had not only pushed them to become better warriors, but had also contributed to the development of Japanese swordsmanship as a whole. And though they may be gone, their legacy lives on, inspiring future generations of martial artists to strive for greatness.